Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, doing another movie review this week. This time, it's another stop-motion animated film that came out on September 23, 2005, just 10 years ago, called Tim Burton's Corpse Bride. It's a story about a young man who was ready to be married by a young woman. Unfortunately, he had a lot of trouble having to memorize his bowels. So then he had to keep on practicing till all of a sudden he accidentally put the, the wedding wing on what seems to be a corpse bride. Just came back to life in the land of the dead. Tim Burton wanted to do another stop motion animated film after The Nightmare Before Christmas. And he even teamed up with the screenwriter Caroline Thompson along with all the other screenwriters. You had John August and Pamela Peddler, yeah, and as well as uh, Danny Elfman with John August writing some of the lyrics too. I thought, yeah, why not? I mean, why not have another film that's similar to uh, The Number for Christmas, only this time, only make it more different than ever before, because this time it's set in a European village, so it tries to make it more as we know it. Plus, it even has a different cast this time around. I mean, once again with Johnny Depp, since you know he's been working with Tim Burton since Edward Scissorhands, and Helen Bodenham Carter, who is uh, Tim Burton's wife, and has been in in some of his uh, later films, yeah, including uh, you know, Big Fish. And this is, of course, the Blu-ray edition that I picked up uh, back in 2009. Um, when Circuit City was going out of business and had a good deal on it, so I pick it up. And yep, it has all the features on the back, yeah, right there. So it's a great film. Uh, you know, it's, it's still remembered today, you know, because they still play it on TV and everything. That along with the Nightmare for Christmas. So I think this movie has a good uh, reaction to it. Also, the fact that this movie was produced by Laka Entertainment, the same company that will soon be able to do films like Coraline, Paranorman, and The Box Trolls. Yep. So, <laughs> this would be the first to do so. So, yeah, and, and I loved it too. It's also a box office hit at the time. It, Out of its 40 million budget, it made one hundred seventeen point two million dollars it was even nominated for an Oscar too that was cool it, it didn't win but it was interesting that this film got nominated and it was well received by critics yeah yeah and it's not so bad so let's get to the film it stars Johnny Depp Helen Bodenham Carter Emily Watson Tracy Ullman, Paul Whitehouse, Joanne Lumley, Albert Finney, Richard E. Grant, Christopher Lee, you know, he's no longer with us, sadly, Michael Goff, same here, Jane Horrocks, Ann Whitetail, Deep Boy, and Danny Elfman. Yep, written by Caroline Thompson, John August, Pamela Peddler, and it's directed by Tim Burton and Mike Johnson. The movie begins set in the 19th century Victorian era village somewhere in Europe. A shy and gonky young man named Victor Van Dort, who's played by Johnny Depp, who happens to be the son of all the fish merchants, and a young neglected daughter of the hateful aristocrats named Victoria. Everglot, who's played by Emily Watson, are preparing to their arranged marriage and will raise the social class of Victor's parents and restores the wealth of Victoria's penniless family. Both, of course, had concerns about marrying someone that they do not know, but upon their meeting for the first time, they fall in love with each other. But then suddenly, Victor ruins the wedding rehearsal and was scolded by Pastor Galswell, who is played by Christopher Lee. So, of course, he flees and has to practice his wedding vows in a nearby forest, placing the wedding ring on a nearby upturned tree root. 
but then that turns into a finger of a murderer woman in a tattered bridal gown named Emily who's played by Helen Butterham Carter who actually rises from the grave claiming that she is now Victor's wife yeah causes him to faint already woken up he finds out that he was spirited away to the surprisingly festive land of the dead where Emily was murdered years ago by an unknown criminal on the night of their secret alonement. Emily as a wedding gift reunites Victor with his long dead dog Scraps you know, along with her trusty uh, green maggot that's in her eye called simply Maggot yeah, in the style of uh, Pre de Lorie. Yeah, he even acts like one, too. Yeah, they're basically just, you know, spending the entire um, Land of the Dead, you know, just you know, doing their song and dance, you know, with a lot of music beats, with a vicious one eyed singing skeleton named Bojangos, who's played by Danny Elfman. And they all had a wonderful beat. But meanwhile, Victoria's parents heard that Victor has been sent by another woman's arms and becomes very suspicious. But wanted to reunite with Victoria, Victor decided to trick Emily into taking him back to the land of the living by pretending that he wants to meet his parents. So of course she agreed to this and takes him to see Elder Gunkaneck, who's played by Michael Goff, you know, the kindly ruler who is an elderly uh, skeleton of the underworld to send him and Emily temporarily to the land of the living. Of course, Victor decided to ask Emily to stay here so that way he can go after Victoria. But then his plan soon backfires once um, Emily had found out. So, and that gets even much worse because then all of a sudden Victoria's parents decided to marry to a presumptuous roughly newcomer in the new town named Lord Bacchus Bittern who's played by Richard E. Grant so he'll, which he'll appeared in the wedding rehearsal against her will so already Emily is feeling very heartbroken by Victor after lying to her and with Victor's family coachman appears in the afterlife you know they had to find a better way to uh, to stop uh, Lord Bacchus from marrying uh, Victoria. So Victor, of course, had to, along with Emily and all the rest, had to stop him before it's too late. So that's what the film's all about. I mean, it definitely has the feel of what Tim Burton's uh, previous film was, except this was a whole lot different. I even love the chemistry that it went into, despite the fact that, you know, you know, Victor doesn't belong in the land of the, of the dead with uh, Emily because you know Emily was despite of being dead she is very attractive I mean I thought she was definitely the right choice for, for Victor in my opinion but otherwise you know it doesn't matter because you know he had to go with um, you know Victoria anyway because you know that way you know they both um, stayed together you know you know by their parents alone and I know that's becoming a problem. But even Victoria is also very pretty too and and um I also like her too. Um but they had a lot of great characters also too. Um besides Victor and Emily as well as Victoria. Um there was um yeah, Bonjungos with scraps and <laughs> as well as maggots and and all the rest of the guys. Yeah, it, it was fun. I, I love the, the dark uh, style of the film. It definitely has that feel of 19th century Victorian era type of uh, style that they would have. It works so well with having it go from the land of the living to the land of the dead. Yeah, a lot of great shots too. I mean, this would definitely look good for 3D if, if this movie was ever projected it in 3D, but it never was. It was on 2D. Um, it... Yeah, and I, I love the music too. I mean, it works so well. I'm glad they got Danny Elfman back to um, to do all the creativity because you know he's been working together with Burton anyway. <laughs> yeah, and they got John August to write the the lyrics as well. That works. 
I thought Johnny Depp was perfectly cast in this movie. He even looks like him, too. All in uh, animation form. I mean, the way they created uh, his character, he definitely looks exactly like you know Johnny Depp. And, um, yeah, and then Hannah Bodenham Carter, too, was very good as uh, Emily. You know, she's very true. Despite of being dead, she does look almost alike. And all, all of that, it was just all created with with all, all the... Because um, they did use uh, clay and all that stuff to make all the characters just to come to life. It was perfect. And, um, and all the rest of the actors who played them too, like Christopher Lee, you know, Sally no longer with us. Yeah, he passed away recently. Yeah, Michael Goff, who passed away a long time ago, was great, too. You know, after he played uh, Alfred and, and all the Batman films, yeah. It was great that he got him back. And all, all the rest, I mean, yeah, including Danny Elfman, who did a great job. Also, um, this was the first uh, stop-motion technology that actually used uh, digital cameras instead of the traditional... 35 millimeter film cameras. It was shot with a Canon EOS 1D Mark II digital SORs. So it has a lot of movements that, that moves very digitally. So it has uh, a lot of that, that that goes along, you know, with the characters, you know, moving and and going completely fast than your traditional ones that you saw. It, it just works, and I love it. I mean, this is perfect. The the best choice for a movie like Horse Bride. I mean, and, and in spite of its problems um, with the story, I still think it works. So I really recommend this movie. So anyway, I give Horse Bride four and a half stars. I'm Joseph Asabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.